Hey guys, what is going on? It's Fen here again. So today I want to talk about um, baking out displacement maps for Cinema 4D when you are sculpting inside Cinema 4D. So one of my um, subscribers sent me one of their files because they were having issues actually getting a decent displacement map rendered out. And he was having artifacts kind of shooting out of his model when he applied the displacement. And this was because of two things. One of them being that his, his UVs just weren't good enough. And two, rendering out his map wasn't correct. Um, so today I'm going to talk about some of these. And we're going to go through and figure out how to render out a decent um, looking displacement that works correctly on your model. So first things first is actually getting your UVs. Now I've got several tutorials on UVing inside Cinema 4D and an external program called Headish UV Layout. Now I do recommend using Headish UV Layout simply because it's a lot easier. It actually flattens out and stretches your UVs to make them uniform so they're all the same length and it's really important. Now the second thing is to make sure that your model is pretty much all quads and um, you can you can get away with triangles but to be honest if you want the best results quads which means four sided polygons is your best bet and make sure they're square now on this model they're not actually square we have some rectangles down here in the center and that's not good this was a quick model so I wasn't really bothered about actually getting this set up, but it still does work, but generally try keep everything quadded and evenly spaced if possible. Because when you subdivide, if you have more um, tighter polygons, they're going to be actually compacted more than, let's say, these rectangles here. So you've got to make sure that they're evenly spaced as best as possible. So. Uh, I'm going to show you the UVs on this. I'm going to go up here to the layout and switch to the BP UV edit. And this is pretty much my layout. It's it's very simple. Um, I've got these obviously over here. I've got these ones over here. And you, you can see that they're not actually straight. But again, if you're going to do this, you want to do it properly. Take your time. Make sure everything's straight. Everything's lining up. And most importantly, make sure your UVs are actually in the correct orientation. As you can see, this is facing down and the N15 is in the correct orientation. It's not upside down, it's not back to front, it's not, um, what would it be? It'd be a back to front five, a one and then an N. So make sure it's in the correct orientation for all of them. As you see, the E2 is perfect, all these are perfect, etc. So that's one of the most important things, do that. Then what you're going to do is you're going to go to the sculpting and what we're going to do is sculpt. Now, this isn't going to be anything fantastic, so if you're looking for a sculpting tutorial, this is not it. I do have a sculpting tutorial already on my channel, so be sure to check that out. It's very easy to find. Um, so I'm going to subdivide once, which is going to give me the tag on my object. As you can see, the sphere now has a sculpting tag on. I'm going to get rid of the actual um, material here, because we don't really need it. I'm also going to turn off the ground lines shading. And what we're going to do is go back to the sculpting and click on our object and we're just going to subdivide a few times, maybe up to level 5, which is going to give us all that nice detail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the hmm, wax brush, let it load, and then I'm just going to do some sculpting on here. And we're going to fill in maybe some of this and use the control to kind of chunk away some of this stuff as well. I'm only going to focus on the front section here just to get you, give you a, a pretty decent idea of this maybe something that you might do. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to, and one of the things that actually does cause a lot of issues is kind of things that are poking out. So I'm going to do some poking out and hopefully this will work. I haven't actually tested this, so it'd be actually quite nice to see if it works or not. So once that's done, we have our object, now we need to bake it. So first things first is go to the Bake Sculpt object. You want to save your file. I'm going to save it on the desktop. I'm going to say Bye and save it onto my desktop. I'm going to leave the format as default. 
leave the color depth as default. Now the preset size is important. I'm gonna render one out at low, which is 512, and then I'll render one out at high, and you'll be able to see the difference. So I'm gonna make sure I've got single file checked and continue UVs checked. I'm gonna render out a displacement. I'm gonna render out just the displacement for now. And let's bake. Sounds like a cooking show. <laughs> but I assure you, this is no cooking show. So this is gonna render it out, and it's gonna actually give us a separate object. Now it's very important that you you go through this process to figure out what actually affects what. It is very important. So, <clears throat> this is just rendering out. We've got quite a bit of detail here on the front. And there we are. So I'm gonna to go to the object. I'm gonna hide the original, which has got the S for sculpted on. And then let's just render this out. So as you can see, first things first, we can see the seams. Um, as you can see, we can see a lot of these crisscrosses and that's simply because the base mesh is too low to accommodate what's happening. Also, the map is too low to accommodate what's happening. So, solutions. What are the solutions? Well, the, it depends what it's for. If this is gonna be an object in the background that you're not really gonna see, then you probably could get away with this, even though it doesn't really look nice right now. With some textures on here, like a rock texture, you might not even see the line, so perhaps that might be good enough. But in most cases, especially when you're sculpting, this detail probably will be seen, and maybe quite close up, so this probably won't do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust this. I'm gonna select my original again. I don't need to turn it on, but I'm gonna hide the second sphere, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just put an extra E on the end of this because this is just testing. I don't really need to know the file names because it does everything for us. So I'm gonna leave everything here default, but in the options for baking, I'm actually gonna give myself a level one, and then I'm gonna bake again. So we're gonna end up with two here, and you'll be able to see the differences between these as we progress through this, and you'll be able to decide do I need more map size or do I just need a higher base geometry? Most times or not, it's probably both. The higher map resolution, which is over here in the baking section, the more detail you're gonna have. So, let's render this out and we'll see. It looks a little better if we just actually compare these. Just grab this one, bring it out, and this one and bring it across. You can see this one over here on the right, um, this one's level one, which means it's got a lot more geometry. As you can see, the differences are quite big. So if we render both of these out, you'll see we do get a lot of differences. Um, the lines are smaller, of course, because it's kind of traced, it's outlining the, the geometry lines. Um, but the seams aren't particularly as, as bold, if you like, um, as on here. So we are getting there. So what can we do to improve that? Well, let's just delete both of these because we don't need them. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna increase the map size to a 2K map size. Go to the options, again, we want to click on our original sphere and make sure we've got level one. You never want to render out a very, very base layer because it just doesn't have enough geometry. Depending on how high you go, maybe one or two would be ideal because you don't want too much geometry, but you don't want too little. So I'm gonna bake this out again. It's gonna ask me, do I wanna overwrite the one I've just rendered out? I'm gonna say yes, because we don't have that model anymore. So there's no point having it. And we're gonna render this out, which is pretty cool. It's, I feel like it takes less time to render out a bigger map for some reason. I'm not sure if that's just me going through this many, many times, but it kind of seems that way. So once we've rendered this out, we should see some better results. So I'm gonna render this out, and as you can see, that looks pretty damn good, right? We, we can still see we see some seams here, and maybe down on the sides here, and a little bit on the sides down here, but that's a massive improvement, right? So what else can we do to improve this? Well, quite simply put, it's actually rendering out the full passes of baking. 
which means rendering out the displacement, rendering out the normal, and rendering out the ambient occlusion. These all help to actually pull off this look. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and add an extra E on this because we want to compare these. So in the main one, in the baking options, everything's the same. In the actual options, we want to tick normal, ambient occlusion, and have include top levels. So then we're going to render out again, and then we're going to compare these, and you should see a significant improvement. So this first render here will be the displacement map being rendered out. And if you look down here, once it's done, it will render out the normal map and the ambient occlusion map as well. Now, depending on how big your map size is, it might take it might vary in how long it takes um so as you can see it's rendering out here it's five seconds six seven eight so we just need to wait for this to render out it shouldn't take too long but i'm gonna leave it to actually render out and just explain to you why it's important um and what the different maps do so the displacement actually displaces geometry it tries to take specific points and move them around to conform to what we want it to. Now, you can't do that unless you have more polygons, which I'll demonstrate in a little while. Now, the normal map is your detail. It adds all the fine detail. Um, you can get away with actually just only using that um, because it has a lot more color information. It will actually give you a lot more detail. With displacement, it's pretty much just um, grey, so it's black, white, and grey. With the normal map, it's multicolours, and with the ambient occlusion, it actually gives cracks and crevices the depth it needs to look authentic. So, one thing you will see straight off the bat is the one we've just rendered out, which is this one, looks completely different to this one over here. And that's because a combination of the displacement and the normal map. The normal map is giving this illusion that everything is actually already being displaced rather than this one over here. So it is important that you render them all out together to get the best look. Even though these points are exactly the same on this one, this is a very smooth mesh, whereas this one actually has the points halfway displayed or should I say um, disrupted from its original position that way you're going to get a, a lot better result so if we just render both of these out we can see the differences on these are like heaven and hell they are completely different and this is what you need um, if you just render out displacement you're going to get a lot of these horrible details because the geometry just can't handle it now, in different programs such as ZBrush and Mudbox, and there's, there's a few other sculpting programs out there, they all have different algorithms for rendering things out. ZBrush, of course, have the better, simply because it's a sculpting program. Cinema 4D is not a sculpting program, so the code, the algorithm they use to bake out sculpts, isn't particularly the best, but if you follow the correct instructions, and to be honest, they, they should have kind of put this on the front page when they created the sculpt. If you want to bake out textures, bake out every single map and not just the displacement map. Because as you can see on the left here, displacement map do a good job, but they just don't cut it. Um, rendering out a normal map and um, an ambient occlusion, as, as well as a displacement map, will give you better results. So I do encourage you guys to experiment and uh, just play around. So hopefully this will help. Now it is important that you do UV, but just to test the theory, let me do a little experiment here at the end with you guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete the two spheres that we had. We're going to bring back our original so we can see it. Turn off the shading. And we're going to click on it, we're going to go to bake, we're going to make up some random name, save it on the desktop. So again, put this to 2K, put these on, options, put all these on, 
and I'm going to use a level one and I'm going to put this to let's say cubic so it's going to override the existing um, UVs on this sphere which we did which I did should I say previous so let's just bake this out and we can see does it make a difference I would assume it would because as you can see here they look completely different now they're in different locations um, there's more of them less of them um, so basically we're just kind of experimenting now um, you've only got two options you've got cubic and angle you know that what what the difference is cubic does it in a box mode angle gives you different angles I suppose um, so it's done the displacement it's trying to render out the um, the normal map and the ambient occlusion so we're just gonna wait for that to render out and you know it should look somewhat good but it might give me that problem where it gives me stray artifacts in the mesh um, I've tried it multiple times and especially with kind of extrusions like this where we've got points pulled out of the mesh I tend to get them there um, but we'll see once we um, actually render this out yeah not much to talk about <laughs> Um, again, if there's anything that you guys need help with, feel free to PM me. Um, I really enjoy helping people, and especially when people send me PMs about their problems, and I can help them in any way, such as this. You know, it, it really does make my day, um, because I enjoy helping people. It's just who I am. Um, but yeah, as you see, this one's actually taking a little bit longer, simply because of, of it's got more things to render out now, which is understandable of course so it's almost done and voila it is done so let's grab this and move it over and grab this and move it over so obviously the gray ones are original and the white ones the one we've just done so if we render this out it looks pretty good actually so that is very surprising um, so if you don't want to UV it you can just perhaps use cubic but in all honesty, UVing is a very important part of sculpting, of texturing, and understanding it is important. And if you want to go into a company, a games company, anything like that, um, you will need to know how to UV to some degree, um, just to make other people's jobs easier, if not your own. Um, it's very easy to learn. And once you learn it and you have the tools, it, it becomes, you know, it, it's so fast. Um, I did this in a matter of seconds. Um, the actual baking did a pretty good job. Um, there's no stray artifacts anywhere, which I did have problems with earlier in the day. Don't get me wrong. I didn't just miraculously restart recording and this worked for me. I freaking tried so hard to get this working and it was just a mess every single time. And it turned out it was the UVs that were just messing me around. And then, of course, rendering out all the displacement maps, um, normal and ambient occlusion helps tremendously, especially covering up all the seams and stuff like that. So, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it helped you out. And, of course, I hope it helped out that individual who actually needed the help in the first place. Um, but thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will catch you in the next episode. Peace.